All right, folks. Welcome. This is uh, let's remember how to do this now. We have to lower the sound. All right, we're doing multi streaming here, folks. So be patient. <laughs> Web three by three. Thank you for joining. This is episode 23 The Convergence Web three, AI, and the metaverse. We'll be discussing today how these technologies are beginning to meld together. Uh, I am joined as always by my host, co hosts, Michelle Peterson Clark, the content marketing queen. Hey, everyone. And Mike Newbauer, your ops guy. Hello, hello. Oh, Mike, haven't got your sound either. <laughs> so Michelle is coming to us from London. Hello, hello. I'm, there we go. All right, there we are. I am back in the UK, just, you know, Atlantic hopping. I'll be here for next week's episode. Then the week after, I will be back in America with y'all, as they say, if you live in the South. Y'all, that's great. <laughs> so we're going to be, uh, we'll, hopefully we'll have some time for some Q&A later on today. We, we, we keep trying to get this done. Uh, we're going to run through a couple of stories. The goal of this podcast is not to give you the news, although we will do that. The goal of this podcast is to explain the business angles and the developing aspects of Web3, which is increasingly involving AI and the metaverse, and how you can use these principles in your business in a very practical way. Companies, creators, small entrepreneurs are using these tools to generate revenue, to create loyalty, to come up with new and innovative business models, to be frank. And so Mike, Michelle, and myself are here to discuss this weekly to try to help you get a handle on it and understand how you can use it in your own business. So with that, uh, I'm going to jump into story number one. In the convergence of Web3, AI, and the metaverse, there's a story that comes to us from Forbes entitled Convergence of Web3, AI, and Metaverse. And this is talking about the these three groundbreaking technologies and how the combination will change, quote, how humans interact with the digital world. This will spark unprecedented business opportunity and societal advancement, according to Forbes. Quick definition of terms, and then I'll put it to you two for conversation. AI... Uh, this is me now. I would define this as simulated human intelligence, right? And Web3, any use of blockchain technology. And Metaverse is anything in the shared virtual world. As I would define this, and I agree, the article goes through how this AI is really going to be used for automation. It already is. Web3 will be lending itself in the sense of decentralization. And the Metaverse as a digital distribution platform, much like we know the internet today. So the combination, automation, decentralization, and a distribution platform, this lends itself, obviously, to digital financial transactions. So I'm going to put this to Michelle first as the content marketing queen. What was your take on the article? What do you think? And how do you feel this will impact these three technologies? General thoughts. So general thoughts is uh, I think that over the last couple of weeks, haven't we, we've seen a general tide turning in the financial news press of being more optimistic about the sector, so about Web3 and what it may uh, be capable of and what it can do for us. And because of that, I think that people are coming up with more innovative or, you know, letting their imaginations run a bit freer in terms of what they think is possible or what might be possible um, and and I think that this this article is you know is saying that and with the advent of you know we've talked a few weeks about the Abu Dhabi three billion dollars um, being invested and other com other countries sort of jumping on that bandwagon I think that it you know banks venture capital firms and those sorts of people who weren't necessarily burnt by the FTX and um, you know the the SBFA, what was it? The San SBB? Francisco one. Well, yeah. Um, Bank, right. Yes, SVB. Um, those that weren't burnt by that are thinking, you know, maybe now's the time to start seriously taking a look at it. Mike, what do you think? What were your take on the article when you saw this? The Web3 AI metaverse coming together. Uh, I mean, I think it's important to keep in mind that these are three emerging technologies independently. And I think that there's overlap in some capacity, but in the grand scheme of things, these are three independently evolving bits of technology that are still very, very new. And until there's a grasp on 
the direction that each one of these are going individually, trying to combine them and trying to force uh, one to rely on the other for any purpose, I think is very premature. Um, and I think each of these need to stand independently and prove themselves independently um, over a much larger period of time, a much, a much more, um, a much larger, uh, I guess, experience timeline than has already happened. And if we start combining these things now, uh, there's going to be uh, issues that one has that will feed into the next. And before you know it, we'll be caught in this web that we're going to have to backtrack um, in order to try to fix things. And what I mean by most of the, what I mean Good. by most of this is that like blockchain technology is unique in and of itself. We've seen that thrive independently. AI has evolved very fast. Metaverse was a concept, but really hasn't caught on, I guess, the same way that people were anticipating it, you know, catching on. A lot of companies have actually backed out of it. Um, there's going to be these ebbs and flows. And if we throw all the eggs in one basket and say, hey, this is what we're going to call this evolution of this new Internet. And it's all three of these pieces. I think that, that that's that's a recipe for some trouble right now. So I'm going to shockingly take the complete opposite side of this coin, Mike. I feel like whether we like it or not, they're combining. Right? This is we've, we're watching it happen. I think that the Web three thing has been first. It was laughed at. Now they're starting to dabble in it. Metaverse is still in the being laughed at phase, but that's because it's more tech required. AI is going to make the other two happen much quicker. You, you don't disagree with that, right? Um, I don't, but I also feel that you know the the whole uh, the whole concept of AI at this point is still very, very um, un like it's not fully understood, right? And I firmly believe that there's still a lot of fingerprints on AI that you know gives it in that guise of artificial intelligence. And if that if people start relying on AI to build out these other tools and those AI I guess processes are not vetted correctly, those other tools are going to get built out incorrectly. I think that's exactly what we're going to see. Michelle, you're free to, free to jump in here. I feel like the, the, the reality, Mike, isn't the AI's problem. AI is not the issue here. It's the people believing AI is unbiased is the issue. The minute you recognize AI has an agenda, then it's no different from a person, right? I, uh, conservative yeah. Republican doesn't matter what you think. I, I'm think not. It. I'm not. I'm not really speaking on those contexts, man. I'm talking like you know. Uh, all right, we're we're going to rely on AI to build an element of a blockchain, and if it's incorrect in assessing the way that that's going to evolve over a period of time, and the way that Web three is evolving, you're building those constructs from the ground up incorrectly, right? So again, like just take the basics of a blockchain, and you, you know, you own a business, you want to incorporate your business on chain. Right. You want to incorporate your vendors, your suppliers, and you want to build the, these elements. You're going to rely on AI to help build out that blockchain. If it does things incorrectly because it's not well equipped with that type of information, then you're you are building out that framework incorrectly for your business right away. That's money. That's time. That's investment. That's a lot of issues that you're relying on this technology for now without understanding its full cap uh, capabilities. How is that different from now, though, with the ERC-20 tokens being remade? You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's technology that gets better, and what the beginnings are always isn't right. Well, I mean, again, you have software engineers. You have people who truly understand the technology, I think, in, 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 in a different way than some AI program that's still evolving to understand how to provide the information accurately. Um, and I think, you know, it, it goes well beyond this example, right? I mean, but... Uh, I, I again, I don't think that one is in a position to rely on the other at this stage. Will there be overlap? Yes, I think that that's inevitable. And I think with any technology, the cross the crossing of those bridges together is going to be important for the evolution and the 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 continued advancement in those technologies respectfully. They will help each other in some way, shape or form. But to fully rely on them in the, without the individual, two legs to stand on at this point, I think it's very premature and it's very early for that. And I was um, listening to um, Fanzo's 365 podcast that he did last week. Um, so it's this week's episode. Um, and he has been in cybersecurity 
and worked in the Pentagon and stuff like that over the years. Um, and he was saying, he did an episode on AI, and he was saying that um, it, it is so immature at this stage. We are so early. What it's capable of and what it can do and how it can think is like a newborn baby currently compared to what may be possible in the future and, and how it will work. So um, from that point of view, I, I think Mike's right. People don't know, you know, we've talked about a number of times before, haven't we, about, um, you know, like who's pulling the strings at the moment behind the curtain because we're not sure um, how the algorithm, how, you know, how it works, how it thinks, what it's looking at. Is it only looking at 10 websites you know, or is it looking at 10,000 websites when it tries to get information for you? Those sorts of things we don't know yet. Going back quickly to an earlier point that Mark made at NFT NYC last week, um, someone there was saying that um, in regards to your metaverse point, Mike, um, that Fashion Week, which was a couple of weeks ago held in the metaverse, um, was 70% down on attendance compared to last year. So that's pretty significant in terms of the number of people that are going in there and looking around, playing around and doing that stuff. I mean, we have talked about before, haven't we? You know, do you want to go into Starbucks, Starbucks virtually and, you know, buy yourself a soda and, you know, or buy a Coke at, you know, the local shop or whatever? Do you want to do that in the metaverse? Um, or not, and and we've got to get to that point where people do want to do that, otherwise they won't, um, you know, otherwise it won't be successful. Funnily enough, we were talking to our, <laughs> we were talking to our 14-year-old about, you know, I said, well, why don't you get a job at Starbucks in the metaverse and, you know, get your £10 an hour from sitting at home rather than having to actually go down to the local Starbucks and do the real work. You could serve people in the metaverse. Josh thought it was hilarious. I think that's not too far <laughs> off. So speaking of future projections here, for those who are joining us, thank you. We're discussing an article out of Forbes, Forbes magazine. The, the article is entitled Divergence of Web 3 AI and the Metaverse. And in the article, they discuss the market value projections for these three industries. So within the next six years, this is according to Forbes, the AI industry will be worth $1.3 trillion in just North America. In the Web3 world, they're expecting a $3 billion valuation in the next few years. And again, the metaverse, $5 trillion. That's according to McKinsey. All of this is within the next six years. You're talking multi-trillions of dollars per industry each, and they are already starting to integrate. Again, the, the basic layout, the, the format by which you should think of this, AI being the automation of it, Web3 being the decentralization aspects, which we are very familiar with here, and the metaverse being the new digital distribution platform. That's where everything gets bought and sold. To your point, Michelle, <laughs> about making money, sitting at home, working at Starbucks. Yeah. Um, Mark, just for everyone who is um, on Twitter, um, I've just put the article in the, like in the thread underneath the um, spaces now so people can go and have a look later or have a look if they like. Sorry to interrupt. I'm willing to take some people off Twitter for some conversations. What do you guys think? Let's we move to story number two. We're, we're playing around Let's move to story number two and then... Right, welcome back. Then don't, the... don't abandon us, peoples. We're, uh, we're going to do some Q&A later. Only so, because sort of, the, it'll stuff up the YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, you can stuff up as it is. Story number two comes from nftevening.com, who I'm not familiar with, but this is AI meets blockchain. And this relates to the first story we're just talking about. There is now a company called Mindverse, a Singaporean-based AI firm. And they're launching a suite of Web3 tools, which will allow you to create virtual beings as NFT avatars. So in a nutshell, you can now create guides people for your virtual world of the metaverse right so these ai geniuses as they call them will assist web3 in sales service and delivery of things like coffee being made at starbucks so you can basically build a metaverse or enter a metaverse and now make yourself your tony stark jarvis to guide you through it because that avatar will know and read the code and know exactly where you want to go and what you want to do it will guide you Versus for those of you like myself who've dabbled in the metaverse now, you're trying to figure out how to move the character around. So thoughts on this. We're, we're getting into a, a 
personal assistants in the virtual world. Mike, what do you think? We'll start with you. Uh, I mean, I, again, I think we're very premature here. Uh, you know, this is this is a good model that perhaps could be in a sci-fi movie at this point. But, you know, the truth is, I mean, you know, Michelle rattled off the, the statistics earlier, like the 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 integration with the metaverse right now has declined since the pandemic. And I would actually anticipate that trend because people are actually back in the real world. Right. They don't need this fictitious world of fake Starbucks when they can go get a real Starbucks for 10 bucks. Right. Like there's no need for any of that other than social stature. And if you need a guide to tell you how to be cool in a digital world, then I think that's another issue we need to discuss further. But where this is going to come around full circle is if you're a business that's trying to promote your 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 product, your service, your your idea in this digital construct. And that's used as a selling tool. Maybe that's the purpose of it in, in the grand scheme of it, but that's not scalable. So let me give you an example, Mike. I'm going to jump stories here. One of the things I was going to roll out later, Bruce Lee is entering Web3. This is a story off of a uh, similar, well, I'll save you the whole backstory. But the martial arts legend, the estate of Bruce Lee is teaming with a video platform to create NFTs. If there were a Bruce Lee experience in the metaverse, there's not yet, but if there were, and I'm a huge fan, which I am, and I can only go there through the metaverse. Uh, I, it's not about me trying to pretend to hang out at Starbucks. I'm going to go get value because I'm a fan. What, what, what I say don't you disagree, to that? but do you, do you need to create a, a, an avatar guide to show you that? Or are you going to be able to navigate your way to that point? Right. Like I, I'm just saying that we're in this we're in this stage right now where, you know, understanding where the technology is, we don't need to build additional technologies to handhold us to, to integrate us into the technology yeah. that's already being created. Right. So if you're a Bruce Lee fan and that NFT is a gateway to possibly get you access to something that interests you, that's the purpose of what that NFT does. That's a great use case for it. I love it. Right. And if that metaverse is the platform for you as the holder of that NFT to consume that information, all the better. Um, but do you need to relay back to this to this other article about creating this 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 tour guide in order to bring you there to tap into your interest levels and basically walk your handhold you and walk you through that process? I don't, I don't think that's necessary at this stage. I go ahead, Michelle, you're going to say something. I was going to say that, uh, I mean, I, I'm kind of in a bit few minds about the Bruce Lee thing because it's sort of like, well, they've gone, oh, yes, let's have an NFT collection. It'll do something really good in the future. We're not sure yet what that will be, but buy it anyway so that, you know, we can work on what the project's actually going to be about in terms of utility or whatever. And, you know, $780,000 later, um, they've now got to do something for the project. Um, and it's not unlike all of the you know ones what? that we've heard of before. It's almost like when you take the, if you don't see the whole staircase, you just take the first step. You need a sales strategy guy like me or someone else to come in there once it's already up and running and say, okay, we're going to open up the Bruce Lee dojo where your avatar can train under Bruce <laughs> Lee in the principles of the way of the intercepting fist. And if I'm a real nerdy yeah. fan of Bruce Lee, I want to enter my own character. Absolutely perfect. Yes. And why okay, wouldn't you? What's the use case for your avatar? I've Just quote unquote, I'm currently training under Bruce Lee. And by the way, I'm also being trained by Anakin Skywalker to become a Sith. Like you can see where this would go. <laughs> I mean, again, I, I look at this as more of an entertainment value proposition versus yeah, anything 100%. else. Now, if if it gave if if that same NFT gave you a step-by-step -step guide on how to train yourself using that video that you exclusively exclusively have access to so that you can train to be more like Bruce Lee, then that's a much different story, right? Hold on, but Mike. Training your avatar, like, I, I, hold on, know. it is not. No, but what about, what about if it's like you book a Pilates or a yoga class, you book a class with 10 people with Bruce Lee in the metaverse and you go in there and in your lounge room, you're doing this, but, you're actually in the metaverse doing it and there's Bruce right in front of you. Like I could actually see that that has legs. Do that again, Michelle. I want to get that on tape. <laughs> so Mike, it is not for us to decide what's of value to the users. That, this is the mistake that companies make. If there's some Star Wars nerd or some Bruce Lee nerd and they want to say to their friends at the bar, I am currently training with Bruce Lee. What? Yeah, in the virtual Oh, world. yeah. 
Yeah. This is about social For status. Sure. When I when I put a I drive a Jeep. I want people to know I drive a Jeep. Why? Because Jeep is rugged. Harley Davidson is rebellion. Right? Nike is athletes. It's the same thing. So when I say yeah. I'm Bruce Lee, it doesn't matter what how ridiculous it is, and it is all this is ridiculous. But people will pay money for it. Right. Why would I, agree. I, 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 I look I, again, I love the use case for it. I think it's great. I also think that like we're, we're extending this beyond the reality that we're, we're, we're having right now. And this is just an extension to a video game. That's really yeah. what this whole thing has evolved to. Right. And Ready if you're going to sit there and spend 10, 10 real dollars on a fake coffee, like in, in, in a start in just because it has the same name as the real coffee, like, that's that's a whole different avenue of issues that I think we need to kind of bridge here. Is this the best use case of the technology? I would argue no. Is it a is it is it one that's in, in, encouraging and gamified? And is there a potential for it? Yes, as long again as there's some real world benefit that you have, because that same kid that you mentioned at the bar, he ain't going to the bar, right? He's going to a bar in the in in the, in this metaverse world, which has a significantly less. Um, population i suppose or interest level at this stage compared to everybody else in the real world right so could this be a cash grab i mean look if you launch anybody with with some sort of a fame or status can launch an nft collection successfully there's going to be people that want to jump on it because hey it's bruce lee why not but if there's no use case for it now now you're putting the cart before the horse and trying to say okay and this is the definition of how rugs start I'm not suggesting that that's what it is, but this is this is yeah. concerning because now this guy is utilizing the technology um, for something that may happen later. Yeah, well, that's I mean, this, this, is really, yeah. this is where we're going. I agree with you. By the way, it's Bruce Lee's daughter, Shannon Lee, who's doing who's spearheading this. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to see Michelle comment before I move to the next story. Yeah. Twitter, Twitter, as we're all watching, is now going to be letting users trade stocks and crypto. Yes, on the platform. So Twitter users can now do sell in, uh, these assets directly through a partnership with eToro. Twitter has changed their corporate name to X Corp for those who haven't been watching. And Musk is looking to turn Twitter into a super app offering financial services, social media, and instant messaging. If if those are who, anyone who knows anything about Elon Musk, like if you really study the guy's business history, at the beginning before there was PayPal, there was X.com. And X.com he envisioned as the, quote, biggest financial institution in the world. And that is what he seems to be building now with Twitter, where you can have instant messaging, pay for it, trade financial assets, including crypto over, you know, assets over the platform. This, to me, is fascinating. I believe that this will happen, and I, as an ex-Wall Street guy, would put money behind this. So this is, by the way, not financial advice. Thoughts? Michelle, we'll start with you. So... A couple of really quick, funny things. We probably, probably our listeners know that Elon changed the name earlier this month of Twitter to X Corp. It's not going to be Twitter, known as Twitter officially anymore. Um, a couple of tweets I saw around that the other day was, well, at least it's easier to pronounce than the name of his children. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> and um, someone else said, well, it's not far from here to X Y Z Corp, which for those that don't know is a pretty is a pretty um, well used uh, Web three extension for domain names, which I thought was really funny. Um, look, the man is the man not busy enough, like. <laughs> I just, look, I agree with you, Mark. I think that it is, um, I mean, we've talked about for a long time that Twitter does actually have to start making money in order to survive um, and that, um, you know, this is obviously going to be one way of doing it. I would assume that there'll be some, you know, kickback in terms of percentage of trades or something that come from Twitter to the eToro app. So um, I guess that's how they're going to make money from it. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm wondering in my head how many um, positions of CEO he could fill and do various different things before things start to fall apart. I know he's brilliant at the things that he does, um, but he has to be stretching himself a bit thin right now. 
All right, I'm going to go on record and say I'm a bit of a Twitter, I, I mean, an Elon Musk fanboy here. But I, one, he's not really the CEO of these companies, not any of them. He has his meetings and he, he's CEO and he needs to be, but he's got teams that run it. No human can do this. And two is with a business mind, he's he a human. But this he is could be an AI. AI. <laughs> This is not the case where a Mark Zuckerberg runs Facebook into the ground because he's making bad decisions and then has to figure out how to make money. Elon Musk knows how to make money. He simply just cuts the firm until it's it's already profitable. Twitter is not going to go out of business. They will simply just pivot this thing on a time. And for example, the charging of the eight bucks with the blue check, that's that is easy. All of these types of things. Elon Musk is the guy that when Tesla was going to go out of business because they needed money. He sold flamethrowers, and then he wasn't allowed to call them sell flamethrowers. We called them not a flamethrower. And if you, and the guy made two hundred fifty thousand dollars in a matter of months. So the point is, he's got the brains to figure out how to make it money. I think that this idea is an interesting one, a, a super app that does everything. Mike, what are your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, I agree. He's brilliant. Um, you know, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a fanboy, but I definitely appreciate the business knowledge and sense that this guy has. He's beyond intelligent in so many different levels. Um, my question, I guess, throws it right back to you. Um, understanding where everything has evolved in the web three space and how NFT projects relied on Twitter to build up their communities, to hype up their projects, to really kind of build up that FOMO and that hot air. And then ultimately it either collapsed under the bear market. Um, how is this going to impact that same type of effort in a direct correlation with Wall Street, with insider trading regulations and pump and dump schemes and all these other things now literally at the thumbs of people to be able to do that where does the liability set in does it set in with x corp or does it set in with toro like there's there's a lot of a lot of potentially bad maneuvers that are going to happen that's going to impact um actual trading versus you know something like nfts which a fraction of the the population are into so i'm going to say that Yes, he's going to get in trouble with Wall Street, for sure. Number one, you're going up against the Federal Reserve with this whole financial thing. Number two, there are no rules right now, as we know. We talk about this weekly. The regulators, is it a CFTC, SEC, all that crap. So Elon Musk is the kind of guy, I'd say Gary Vaynerchuk is in the same boat, where they just shouldn't be in charge of a public company, but they're clearly fine with a privately run one. Like, so SpaceX, he's never in trouble. It's Tesla. Why? Because they're stock. Is this, this, this shareholders? Twitter has shareholders right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if he takes it private. He'll, he's learned that lesson. I, that's just my speculation. I know nothing. He doesn't. He hasn't come to me for advice in a while. He was on okay, Fox so News. He was on Fox News last week and said that he thinks Twitter's now worth half of what he paid for it. So twenty-two billion down the drain. Uh, but it's not <laughs> over yet. The fat lady has a son. No, but that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, and I think yeah, he's that, trying to shake out Wall Street. Family. That's Musk a long the, road to recovery, isn't it? That's where a guy like Musk gets rid of all these investor guys that he doesn't want in the, the mix, right? The Black Rock, the, the, all these Wall Street interests, he would rather they weren't. There. So to, to front it as a money-losing operation, great. That's Well, <laughs> I mean, what, what does this do with all of the financial advising firms that these traditional banks have? What does it do with, you know, traditional traders on Wall Street? I mean, are, are, are people just going to be able to buy Tesla stock in a tweet now? Like, you know, like that's that, these are things that we need to kind of uh, prepare, our, you know, where how far down the rabbit hole is this really willing to go? Um, so because- I'm going to share this with you, Mike. There's one of my customers from Invictus here is a company named Symphony. They're a Wall Street outfit. And one of the things their product is voice trading. They already have the essential equivalent of a Siri or an Alexa. Where you can just basically say, buy me this, buy me that, and the thing will convert to trade. So where does any license come into that? Where does any regulatory tax compliance fit into that? I mean, you know, there's, you know, these... These individual self financial advising firms like Ally Investments and all these different things that you can run on your own, you know, they still are obliged to provide 
tax and documentation and, you know, comply with any SEC and, 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 and IRS, you know, uh, paperwork, like who is then responsible for this? I mean, are you going to sit there and say, Hey, I made $50,000 this year on by trading on Twitter. Well, who's going to back all that up? Like that's, these are questions that I have. Are they going to rely on Toro for that? I mean, I feel like this is going to, you know, somehow it's going to be a lot of finger pointing and blame game, but my biggest fear is that the reach that Twitter has is going to be equivalent to what we saw in the NFT space about the hype, the pump, and the dump. How is it any different, though, from when Microsoft back in the early days creates a Word thing, and then they have Excel, and then they eventually roll them into a package, and then they pick up the slide share and whatever. Like, this is what's going to happen in the AI world. The AI world is going to be a lot of cool tools right now. And somebody's going to come along and aggregate them into the super tool that does all content marketing or all whatever. Well, I agree with you, man. I mean, when you fuck with Wall Street, you have a whole different band of issues, man. And I think the GameStop thing really settled that. You know, people were communicating on Reddit in order to try to prevent GameStop from going out. And, you know, they it literally sent everything into a tornado. Now, imagine if Reddit is Twitter. It's the same model, man. Now you're just incorporating a way to reach these mass audiences with these ideas and Twitter by its nature is an echo chamber. So, you know, all it takes yeah. is a bunch of people to agree. It gets trending. And now all of a sudden people are buying it for the wrong reason. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you on that one. But I also I would disagree with you that the Reddit Wall Street bets thing is GameStop. That that was settled. I mean, it's clearly that the regulators struck back, if you will. But there's a we've seen now that the, the concept of a flash mob in the financial space it's exactly what happened in the crypto world and the bank there situation. were there were calls for shutting reddit down for that I know. right that that mass communication element to be able to get in the way of wall street's traditional way of doing business like that you, you, they they stepped on the wrong toes man and i just see this happening all over again i agree well, with you SCB was about the fact that we have social media and people can instantly contact each other but, and I agree, but does that mean, for example, during the bank runs of the 1930s, they shut down the radio? That's the equivalent. Which is, yeah, I'm well, not saying, go ahead. I mean, again, this is this is the suppression that we're, we're fearful of, right? I mean, look, again, I, I look at this in a different prism because with new things like this, there's always going to be people that try to take advantage of it. And people get hurt in, the, in that same process, right? Now, you know, is there going to be a Twitter police that comes in line with this? Maybe. Is there going to be a Twitter division of the SEC that's designed to monitor that communication and make sure that there's, you know, correct information and act like, you know, I mean, you you understand the value of, you know, any kind of PR pieces that are pumped out on Wall Street, right? Like the inaccuracies of those, if, if any bit of that is wrong, like there's substantial ramifications that come from that. Right there. Yep. Those are crafted and worded very carefully. Joe Schmo writing something about some some project or some business to pump it up, whether it's accurate or not, can catch wildfire on Twitter. Yeah. It's a whole different world. I don't disagree. While we're talking about Elon Musk, Michelle, I think we should mention <laughs> you had some stories you caught. What to throw in last minute. So, um. I mean, we, we've been hearing about the fact that Elon is um, not happy with um, OpenAI and ChatGTP. So this week he's, he's said that he's going to bring out a, a platform or launch an AI called TruthGPT, which, you know, I think it's, it's um, hilarious in and of itself. Um, but earlier today I happened to... Um, be shared an article from my husband that was um, about the Vatican and perhaps that there was going to be a Vatican GPT, which uh, you heard it here first, folks, that uh, <laughs> the Catholic Church is going to have their own version of chat GTP called Vatican Vatican GPT. I'll put those links in the in the um, in the thread, but it's the Vatican thing. So funny. Is the is the Vatican um, GPT? Yeah. Is that uh, at the ninety five thesis dot com website? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. But you know, like they talk about, it. it's very funny because it talks about um, 
you know, like it's indexing the Bible and reverse engineering. So the, the skill of procreation. So, yes, yeah, so it's procreation. It's very, very funny. So um, I'll put those links in the show notes for people uh, to, to our have old, a look at. <laughs> our old, our, or maybe our oldest supporter here, our older friend here, Linda Ray, my prayers are being minted onto the blockchain. <laughs> Something like that, Linda, yes. Linda, that's great. <laughs> but, you know, when, hey, what about, you know, like, because I've, I've done 16th century history. So what about how they used to do indulgences where you paid people to pray for you when you died so you'd get out of purgatory and get to heaven quickly? So what about if I created an indulgence NFT and then that can be used to pray for people so they get out of purgatory and go to heaven quicker? That would Nothing be fantastic. Nothing ever changes. I am writing a use case for that one. It's a hell of a Poe app. <laughs> oh, so, yes. Rather than us just hanging out and, and yucking this up, to connect this to the larger topics here for Web3 AI metaverse, we're starting to see the emergence, and I'm being serious now with Vatican GPT as an example. Everyone's going to have their own GPT because everyone's going to have yes. their own proprietary data set. The two things that I don't understand about AI and relate to Web3, number one, prompt engineering. People still don't have an idea that what the way you ask the question, they know conceptually that critical thinking is required, but they don't know how to do it. And number two, proprietary data. Who provides the data shapes the answer. Mike, you can speak to this. You're blue in the face. You usually do. So I think that the Vatican GPT, truth, GPT, we're going to start seeing GPTs after everything. Thoughts around that? Yeah, like a dot com for everything, too. You know, I'm sure there's a Vatican dot com. Um, but when I saw this, I mean, obviously the chuckles aside, if God is all knowing, why does he need to rely on an AI? <laughs> I don't think right? God's the one doing it. Like, I mean, this, this thing at some point has to, you know, come back to grips with reality that, you know, stop, stop trying to jump on bandwagons and utilize it as a tool. Okay. If the Vatican came out and said, look, if you're looking for inspirational, inspirational wisdom we have an api key that's open source that has direct links to different uh, uh different iterations on where you are in your life and how you know the word of god can help you through that moment right but at some point you know the gpt construct is all going to be specific around each one of these industries where people are going to have their input the technology is designed to evolve its feedback from those things and, you know, you mentioned prop and prompt engineering, like, you know, engineering is, in my opinion, as an engineer, a very dangerous term to use in this in this word. Like we don't call people who search on Google search engineers. Right. It's no different. You yeah. had to learn how to search on Google in order for it to be effective. No different from the way you're going to need to search and type certain things into these AI platforms in order for them to be effective. Um, an engineer is a, a very very specific, uh, I, I guess, accreditation for somebody that's learning how to rely on something that they don't understand. So everyone thinks they're a salesperson because <laughs> there's no real accreditation for that. But as a guy that did it for 30 years, I'm telling you that the same thing will happen to engineer. I, it sucks. I went to an engineering university. Engineers, I have nothing to respect. Michelle, you're married to one. They're, <laughs> the the reality engineers. is... <laughs> Most people don't have the brains to be an engineer, for real. And I agree with you, Mike. But that's not going to stop your average schmo from right now. The average income for an engineer, I'm sorry, for a prompt engineer, is like three hundred and fifty thousand US. Yeah, it's insane because right. real engineers get one hundred and fifty thousand. Right. Yeah, and some chick who's showing off her ass at the gym gets a half a million. So I, I mean, like we live in this upside down world. I get that, right? But I wouldn't call her a posing engineer. <laughs> That's the sound bite for this week's. So, but here's the thing, though, Mike. I'll, I'll put I'll put uh, I'll put Mike's OnlyFans account link in the show notes. <laughs> but here's the reality of how money works. Posing engineer aside, that's hilarious. And I need to know what gym you're part of, Mike. Uh, if I'm, if there's 10 departments <laughs> and I could bring in a quote unquote prompt engineer and I'm paying those 10 department heads 100 grand a piece, I can lay them all off. And now I can have that job done by the one prompt engineer and pay him 350. Well, that's a, that's a win. And that's how these companies are going to do it. And once people realize that, they're going to all become engineers. My son is so, 16. Go ahead. 
Uh, no, 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 I was just going to say, like, if you really truly believe in this technology that it is artificial and it is intelligent enough to start training itself um, based around the necessities that you need, wouldn't you want to train it to provide the correct prompts that you're looking for? Right. And already there are prompts to help make the AI a prompt engineer, meaning you turn that chat GPT four into the prompt itself. You say, Correct. So right. is that worth 350,000 to call somebody and like, why not create a AI engineer GPT, right? Like, yeah, you know, let that, let that system create what you want to create while you're trying to create something that you don't understand what you're creating. I would equate this to Michelle in your world years ago, people needed the, the companies needed the content marketing person. Now they can pretty much get that online through chat GPT. So that it goes up level to strategies and ideas. The same will happen with prompt engineering. Like in my opinion, you're going to have in two years from now, the machinery will do all the prompting itself. It doesn't need an engineer, but in this yeah. two year window, or whatever it's going to be, every man, woman, and child is going to proclaim themselves an engineer and try to get themselves a job with Microsoft. Make hay while the sun shines, as they say. Right. The crypto bros are about to become engineering bros. Well, they're already AI experts, so it's not far for them to move, is it? <laughs> and since we're speaking in the world of the deities of gods and such, uh, Amazon is launching Bedrock, an AI service to build generative models. So you can basically now on Amazon, this is their competition for OpenAI and Google DeepMind. You can create chatbots, ad campaigns, content copy, all that bit off the Amazon tool, tool suite. Mike, what do you think about that? Amazon, I know you love them. Yeah, they're, we're, we're homies. Um, <laughs> I look, I, you know, uh, these additional tools are always beneficial, right? I'm... Uh, you know, I I, I, I I say it very often, the, the app that makes people waffles, the turnkey solution, the I'm going to build a website with Wix. I'm going to build a smart contract with Nifty Kit. Like, you know, you don't need to be these uh, these experts in, in, in the, the raw components anymore when there's these no code solutions that are out there. And if these solutions have additional tangent tools out there as well that can assist, I'm all about it. Right. Like, you don't need to be a graphic designer to understand how to work Canva. Um, you know, like Canva is a, a very user friendly yeah. tool for stuff like that. If there's more tools like that, that, um, that are available, I think that only encourages people to take those steps and utilize some, some elements of their business on those respective platforms. Now, the problem with Amazon is they are going to sink their claws into whatever it is, try to gain as much information they can out of it, and then charge an arm and a leg so that it's almost not worthwhile to utilize it anyway. I don't disagree with that. Michelle, what do you think? Um, certainly, the, um, what they've launched is really aimed at developers and at people who are going to create tools. So it's not... So the rollout of this isn't the same as Chat GTP just being for everybody and anyone can use it. I mean, obviously, you're going to have to have some degree of um, computer science or engineering to be able to use it. And from that point of view, I think that Amazon is certainly going for the different segment of the market than the general AI, you know, writer write me a content marketing article on X and anyone can do it from their computer at home. So from that point of view, I think that Amazon have looked around and looked at what's going on and gone, yeah, there's, there's a, an underrepresentation at the moment of companies directly speaking to those people that need to create the tools and um, use it for furthering the space and that's the, that's the model or that's the angle that they're taking. So I'm going to give the context here for those who haven't put this together yet. There's a there's a battle afoot in the world to come up with the app store for, I guess we're going to call this AI. The AI app store right now, it, this is no different from what Apple did back with the iPods back in the day when they created iTunes. And so you're going to have this war, if you will, between Microsoft with their open AI and they are, you can API in there and create any tools you want. And we're getting 500 a day right now, which do amazing things. And now Amazon wants in on that. Who owns the platform makes the money. Netflix, Amazon, there's tons of examples. And I think that's what we're seeing. 
Is Amazon too late? I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't think they're too late at yeah. all. In f- in fact, uh, you know, this segues back to our Twitter Twitter conversation, right? Like, you know, the the Facebook model at the beginning was to try to create an all in one solution on the same platform, right? You have the ability to buy products, communicate with your friends, be told the news, um, some 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 form of information that people needed to rely on throughout the course of their day in multiple streams, multiple areas. If Twitter's trying to be this all-in-one solution and Amazon's trying to be this all-in-one solution and all these different all these different pieces, I mean, we are monopolizing certain areas into these four or five different giants, which I guess is counter to Web3, right? The whole point of Web3 is to not have these centralized areas to rely on. Um, and, you know, there's going to be a, a, a balancing act going back and forth. And I feel like the companies that, give up some of that power into web three are going to go a little bit further than try to incorporate it into what they currently have. Interesting. Um, I'm going to do final go throughs here for teams. And then are you guys open to trying to bring in some Twitter conversation or is this going to be? Yeah. What we'll do is we'll sign off so that we can stop LinkedIn and um, YouTube and then we'll stay in here and have a chat. Um, I, 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 before, before we do that, could we just, could we touch on the Canon article? Yeah, yeah of course. Sure. That was, I was trying to be like, well, then let's, yeah, real fast for those we're, last article we'll hit today. This is coming to, uh, to us from NFT evening again. Canon, the, the photography company that the camera maker, is launching a photography NFT marketplace. The Canon US is launching a marketplace with its web three presence. They're going to be offering tokenized photographs. And they will accept payments in both fiat and crypto, which I found to be the most interesting part of the article. So, Mike, you're going to lead us the conversation on this one. What do you think? So I think that a lot of those stock images and stock websites that you see, whether it's Adobe stock or, or iStock or any of those things, they're in serious trouble if this catches fire. Um, you know, any of these photographers, these, you know, whether it's for pleasure, leisure, whatever uh, business, you know, now you have the ability to put your entire portfolio on a platform and a marketplace, which, you know, has the ability to have license rights on those on those images. Right. So, you know, part of terms of a photographer that's doing a corporate event or, you know, a wedding or something, they can actually take those elements and now license them on this marketplace in the form of selling them for these tokens. Um, I think this is brilliant. And I think if Canon really pushes this envelope, they are going to be light years ahead of anybody else in that space. Um, and it's going to be very difficult for anybody to follow suit on that. My only pushback on that, Mike, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but Canon's challenge isn't going to be someone coming up with better stock footage. It's going to be the dallies and the mid journeys. And I don't need to even pay for photography, even if it's run. Well, Go ahead. Well, I don't disagree. That marketplace can still cater to that. So So Canon wins at the end of the day. So if you are a prompt engineer instead of a photographer and you create this, this specialized, uh, you know, photograph or this art, and that art has specific tags that people can search in this marketplace, you can still license that AI generated art that was developed based around your prompt and Canon's marketplace can capitalize on that. If the legal end of that holds up, yes. Well, no, I don't think do AI think? is in a position to sue anybody at this moment, but who knows? Maybe it'll evolve to that. Well, I think that there's been discussion. I've read a few things in the last week or two, and the simple fact is that a copyright amongst AI-created images doesn't exist. So you can't be sued for an AI image that you, looks like or you think has been copied from someone else because it's that's apparently that's not how the software works or that's not how the AI algorithm works when it makes an image for you. So it doesn't actually just copy another image and change a few things. It doesn't do that. In the I'll America- credit Mitch Jackson on that one. He just posted an article about, you know, whose right, you know, whose rights are going to be violated on anything with AI. Um, and he is an attorney, so he might have a better insight on some of that stuff. We already know how this goes. And I, I, Mitch is a friend, but I would s- tell us to his face. It's going to be the corporation with the most money will set the rules. Right. This is unfortunately the way. Yeah. 
Well, that's the way the legal process creator. works, man. It's not the it's not who's right or wrong. It's who's willing to pay for the process. If I'm a small creator, but I've got a really cool product, right? The unfan or or battle bunnies or whatever, and I'm suddenly I'm being stepped on by Nike or by you know the NFL. I have to really figure out how to handle that versus Coca Cola. They're just you know what I mean like so rules get made when money gets spent. Not to be cynical, but yeah. I, well, when you have a marketplace. I, I look. I, I thought it was a great concept for creators, particularly photographers who generally run into the issue of how to monetize from that work. And if there's a marketplace dedicated for that, I you know I'd almost be in favor of a blockchain dedicated to that. Um, mm. You know where these images live and people know where to go to find those types of images. That's not. I could see that happening. I, I think that that's a valid point, Mike. I agree with you now. That. There's definitely a place for it, and Canon is certainly the company to pull it off or someone like them. But, yeah, I, I would also argue that I haven't seen the numbers, but I'm sure those places are already feeling the pain. All, all of those online free, you know, not free, you pay money and you can put stock, B-roll, and all that shit, they're in a lot of trouble. I mean, AI hasn't generated enough of lifestyle-type images to replace that, I guess. Um, but the, the, the customization element, I agree with you because there's certain times when you're looking for something on one of those stock footages, you have the idea in your head, but you just can't get it out there or you can't find it based around, you know, your prompt search in that stock footage area, but throwing that same prompt in an AI might give you the result you're looking for. So I was just a quick example. I'm listening to oh, I don't know who it was. someone on Instagram reels rando guy was like oh here's a quick way to make videos without having to put your face on camera throw it into chat gpt4 have it you know generate your five minute video script. move that over to featurefy have it generate the cloned voice yes yeah, so i that, saw that too yeah move that over to movio and uh, generate your ai carrier and the point is in five minutes there's a movie. so that's going to take no time at all before that company just incorporates all three of those elements into their version of microsoft office and now you've got content marketing office Sweet from HubSpot or whoever. So my point is, I agree with you, and I think that whoever does that, the biggest company will set those rules around. Okay, now the court cases and settlements and payoff, there's going to be rules later. But right now, yeah, it's it's a wild west, free run. I would do it. Go until you're told no. My, I think that that's a great. Yeah, I, I mean, look, you know, like the other the the, the future of the technology, the camera is going to evolve for that too, right? Like. Imagine you take a picture and it automatically gets added to a portfolio that you can upload directly on chain from the camera, right? Like there's some sort of a Wi-Fi connection that brings the image directly from the point of snap to the blockchain. Like these are real things that I think Canon can incorporate in the technology, which I think is exciting too. Yeah. I was down in your home state of Florida, Mike, last week, and a friend of mine runs a service, I'll call it, but we'll go down to the beach at night in the touristy areas and take pictures with his drone of people watching sunset and they can buy a photo of themselves and their loved ones and their families at the sunset from a drone shot right? and beautiful sweep of the beach. And his biggest challenge is that he has to email them the next day. And I'm yep. thinking like, you just, you just solved that problem right now. A blockchain access yeah. instantaneous. Yeah. I can totally see it. Anyway. All right. Moving on. So please. Michelle? So um, we just want to tell people that please follow us, um, the Web 3 by 3 on LinkedIn and our YouTube channel and obviously on Twitter. And we're going to uh, remind people that it's not financial advice, that this is just our opinions and um, we are not telling you to do or not do anything. Um, also a reminder for those people that weren't uh, necessarily on Twitter with us that um, the show notes for both the um, LinkedIn and YouTube will have um, all the articles, but you can come to Twitter and come to the spaces because I've put them all in tonight. So um, are we going to stop recording now, Mark, on yeah, that's fine. LinkedIn One last and YouTube and then come Ha uh, coming here and um, for exclusive content for people all ask questions before we finish. Yeah, real fast, I want to add this. We're not selling anything here, folks. There's no pitch. This is not, this is not a webinar. We, we're just trying to have a conversation. For those who want to get involved and have back and forth, we would love to. 
say and have a chit chat. We do. We will. I'm going to reconnect with what Michelle said. Web three by three on LinkedIn is our. Host. We'd love if you could give us. A call. But feel free. Thank you for listening. For those who are on the videos, and uh, we'll be on we'll be on there for a little more conversation if those want to get involved. I am ending the broadcast on.